called Kenya for your very own live African safari. My name is Brent Leo Smith. I've got Dangerous Dave on camera and we're coming to you live from the Maasai Mara in Kenya. So we've got one of the Angama lionesses right next to us here. Uh, she's enjoying a bit of sunshine on top of Termitaria. And uh, it is uh, what an absolutely gorgeous morning. And uh, the Angama lions are spread out on this wide open plain just below the Ololoro escarpment. And uh, we're hoping that they're going to be busy hunting at the moment. They look like they're just enjoying the first early morning rays of the sun. Remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter if you want to ask me about any questions that's happening here in Kenya. Is this incredible? Bringing you live safaris from South Africa and Kenya simultaneously. Oh, she looks quite comfy in the morning sun there. Uh, when we first found her, she was marching through this long grass in search of warthogs, I'm sure. And that is this particular pride's favorite feast uh, while they wait for the great migration to arrive. Now, there are some more of the lions spread out further down to the w w oh, east of us, actually, sorry. Um, but we're just going to see what she's up to at the moment. And as you can see, it's, it's beautiful and sunny here in Kenya, but there is a very cold wind. We had quite a bit of rain last night, which uh, Dave and I are quite happy about. It means we will no longer spend our days completely covered in dust, uh, which is what's been happening while it hasn't rained for the last few days. Well, it hasn't rained much, so the rain has dampened the dust and uh, we will look probably look a bit cleaner than we have been for the last few days. There we are, you can see those lovely Balanites trees in the distance and uh, dotting the Mara and of course that's what the word Mara means, it's sort of spotted or dotted, uh, it's a Maasai word so and it refers to the open plains dotted with Balanites and acacia and shepherd's trees. And there we go. You can actually, if we zoom in, we can have a look. And you see camp from it was camp hidden around the corner. And it's hidden around the corner. Oh dear. Just around the corner. Um, of course, we're with the Angama Pride. And if we look to the top of the cliffs there, there is the Angama Lodge. And with a majestic view over the Maasai Mara. White Lady Eolin would like to know, what is the most exciting sighting we've had so far? Wow, that's a difficult question. Probably some of the cheetah hunts. They've been uh, quite exciting. And, um, well, Dave's had three attempts. Unfortunately for Dave yet, he hasn't seen a kill, but Eggsy and I saw one. I'd say the cheetah and then, of course, the hyena and the buffalo. Uh, we haven't managed to get a lion leaping onto something. We've seen them attempt a few times, but they haven't leapt onto anything just yet. Now, there are some triple skirchies in the distance on the other side there, Davey. And I think... Uh, there's another lioness apparently somewhere down here. I spoke to the guides this morning, but we spotted this one uh, as we were bumbling down the road. And there we go. There, the Maasai giraffe, Tipple Skirchi. Now, this seems to be this pride's favorite area. Uh, we see them around here quite a lot. Hi, Lauren in Illinois. Uh, Lauren would like to know, what season is it in Kenya? Well, we're right at the end of the rainy season. So, uh, the big rains. Uh, there hasn't been that big a rain uh, compared to what... What, what normally happens, but uh, we have had a lovely bit of rain. You can see the grass is nice and long and there's some greenery in it. And uh, so with the end of the rainy season, you have two rainy seasons here. Um, November, December, then you have a dry patch uh, through January, February, and then March, April, May is the big rains. So we're about to head into the dry season at the moment, but we should still get a little bit more rain. And uh, now we often spoke about when we're in Juma about how there's only really two seasons, there's wet and dry, and uh, it's pretty much a little bit different here. Because we're very close to the equator, in terms of temperature and stuff like that, it is very, very constant throughout the year. So, and in terms of temperature, it doesn't get too much hotter, too much colder. Your average minimum temperatures are on 10 degrees Celsius in the middle of the night, and uh, your average high is around 
uh, 28 to 29 degrees. Now MJ was wondering about the temperatures, so it's pretty pretty standard. It very seldom goes over 30 degrees Celsius and very seldom drops below 10 degrees Celsius. So a very temperate climate, very pleasant, and um, of course we're very high here. We're at a thousand, about 1,600 meters uh, above sea level where we currently are at the moment. Uh, our up on top where the camp is, is closer to two, just over 2,000 meters above sea level. So it is very, very high. And that's one of the reasons that the Masai Mara is so absolutely fantastic, is because at high altitudes you generally get much better rainfall. And uh, because of the volcanic soils here, uh, the Mida grass, which doesn't normally grow so well at high altitude, has found this nutrient rich volcanic soils with high altitude. So you get seas and seas of some of the best quality grazing in Africa and of course that's what attracts those 1.6 or so million animals that form part of the great migration. Amber's wondering how close we are allowed to the animals there. Well, it depends on the area you're in. Um, it is well, pretty much the same as the Sabi Sands. If, you, if they come up close to you, you can be as close as the animals want to be to you. Now, certain areas, like where we are at the moment, um, and especially after the rain, uh, you don't want to go off the roads because you will get heavily stuck in the mud and when watching lions one does not want to be digging and jacking and trying to put trees under your tires um, there, are also, there are also areas that are called high usage zones and you must remember that this is not like the Sabi Sands it's not, it's not private land so there are lots of people that come into the park so um, of course we, we do have different permissions but you have high usage zones and, and this is also a high usage zone it means there's a the capacity for a lot of vehicles and a lot of vehicles off-roading would, would, would be bad for the bush it would leave ruts and, and affect seep lines and things like that so this area uh, for everyone generally is a no-go zone in terms of off-roading oh, tired kitty but there are other areas and it all depends on the soil types and that and the, the Mara Triangle is a fantastically run reserve Lexi's wondering whether we've had any animals through the camp. Well, Lexi, we do. We get quite a lot of animals in camp. Uh, we, the most common would probably be the zebras and the eland. Um, there's also some impala that come through camp. There's actually quite a lot of water bike that come through camp. And uh, baboons, of course, wherever you go, there are baboons. Um, and hyenas uh, that come through camp quite regularly. But the coolest thing that lives in our camp, and I'm going to tell you, you've got to, you've got to Google it. It's called a Kirk's Dick Pick. It is possibly the cutest, sweetest little antelope that has ever lived in the history of cutest, sweet antelopes. It makes a Sternbok look meh. It makes a Daika look bleh. It makes a Sunni look meh. So go have a look at a Dick Dick uh, on, online and just Google Kirk's Dick Dick. They are the coolest little creatures. And we've got about three or four that are actually resident and live in and amongst our tents. Now, they're quite interesting because for a little antelope, they're mostly nocturnal, so they only come out really at dusk and dawn. Dave only saw his first one a couple of days ago, but we do want to get Dave's eyes tested. So um, they are they are quite shy and retiring, but the ones in camp are, are actually quite quite relaxed around people because there's been the builders and everyone up and down and around. So it has been uh, a, quite a pleasure to watch the little dick dicks. Oh yes, well remembered, Darby. Now there we have a subspecies of thick-tailed bush baby. That is uh, that we see quite often in and around camp, and the coolest thing about them. So, thick-tailed bush baby is quite different from the one you see at Juma. Um, they do occur in South Africa, much bigger and fluffier. Except these ones are so big and so fluffy, and they're black. So, it's a, a minimalistic race of thick-tailed bush babies. Isn't that absolutely incredible? So, a subspecies of the normal thick-tailed bush baby that occurs. Uh, in these forests up on the escarpment and down towards the river. Now, we're going to move to see if we can find the rest of the Angama Pride. Hopefully they're not as snoozy and sleepy as this lovely lady. But while we do that, let's go see at Jamie, who's scratching around in some scat. 
Welcome to Ke back to Kenya. We've left those lionesses and we're now with two adult male lions. Remember, this is 100% live coming to you from the Maasai Triangle. Now, there are four male lions in this coalition, currently only two, catching a snooze. As I said, it's quite a cool, windy morning here in the Mara, but uh, very exciting to catch up with them. We're probably about a kilometer and a half from where we were with the lionesses, and um, well, unfortunately, they are quite flat. They haven't lifted their heads um, for a while now, but who knows? You never know what's going to happen, and uh, that is why we do live safaris. Remember, hashtag safari live on Twitter if you've got any questions uh, for us out here. So there's four males in this coalition, and they said to cross the river as well, so uh, they... As far as I know so far, and of course we're still figuring out all the lion dynamics in the area, they are lord over the Angama pride, the Olololo pride, uh, are their two main prides of lions that they, they, they are lord over, and I, I suppose all seven cubs of the Angama pride are probably probably theirs, but of course, you know, lions are strange creatures, and females will mate with uh, nomadic males, and in certain areas, up to 50% of cubs born are not genetically related to the dominant males in the area. So it is it is quite an interesting interesting phenomenon, and as we spend more and more time here in the Mara, we're going to understand more of what's going on. So it is very exciting to catch up with these big boys. I haven't seen them for about 10 days, um, but we have been working in areas on the other side of the river and further to the south. So we'll see what's going to be happening um, around here. Oh, have I lost comms again? Apologies, I think my earpiece is giving up the ghost. Let me just play with it a little bit. Uh, there we go. I think I've got Chantal back. Oh no, I lost Chantal again. No. Okay. Um, let me just try one more trick. Oh, there we go. We've got her. Okay, there we go. We've got Chantal back. So remember, any questions, hashtag Safari Live. Rossley. Rossley would like to know, is this the same coalition that the Scar male belongs to? It is not. It is another coalition of four. Uh, not sure on their name yet. We're still trying to meet with the, the lion researchers. They are uh, away at the moment giving a presentation in the UK, so I have to wait for them to get back. Um, and the coalition of four that Scar is part of are called the Musketeers, and they are mostly dominant over the Paradise Pride, which uh, is over the crossing area, so where the wildebeest cross the Mara River, and that is to the south and east of us and uh, we have seen them and I think Scott was actually seen in the Morrow Triangle yesterday so we might take a little meander from here and head further south and see if we can find any other lions or even hopefully that female cheetah that we've been seeing regularly around the hippo pools area so it is very exciting and it's the wonderful thing about being live we literally have no idea what we're going to see around the next corner It's very strong, or well not strong, it's a, a slight breeze this morning. There was quite a lot of rain and wind last night. Aaron's wondering if we've seen the Kitra Tembo Pride yet. So, um, from my research um, and chatting to one of the lion experts, um, Patrick, who's on the other side of the river, and um, so basically in 2014, from the information that we've got, uh, the seven lionesses from uh, broke away from the Marsh Pride and crossed the river. Now, these seven lionesses basically make up what's called the Angama and the Olololo Prides at the moment, and they pushed the Kitra Tembo Pride out and north into the continent. Conservancy. So, and we haven't seen them, and I don't think we're going to see them um, for the next foreseeable future as they have been pushed out according to the information that we've got so far on the lion dynamics in the area. Justin would like to know why are the male lions so tired? Well, Justin, it's hard 
good work defending a territory uh, and also on average lions sleep for about 20 out of 24 hours and even their bouts of movement are not four hours of continuous movement they'll walk for 20 minutes sleep for an hour walk for 15 minutes sleep for 10 walk for an hour sleep for three so it all, all just depends now they probably have been moving quite big distance overnight patrolling roaring proclaiming their domain so now that it's a no longer night time and of course there's a couple of reasons why lions prefer to roar at night they're more active and the second more important reason is the sound carries over a bigger distance so other lions will be able to hear them from a bigger distance at night and generally at night the wind dies down as you can see the wind's blowing um, not too strongly now but that would also affect the sound of their roars carrying so most of their, their big patrolling and movement is done in the no in nocturnal hours so and they will sleep for the majority of the day I don't think these males are going to move very far from these little bushes they might just migrate around as the sun moves uh, just to get some shade although I think they might be in a bit of luck today it's it's um, cloud cover coming in from uh, the north northeast so there we go and uh, well Dave and I are not going to complain either the, the sun up here when there is no clouds can be quite quite scathing I think we've gone about four four shades darker but of course we're bringing you a live safari not only from Kenya but also from the Sabi Sands in South Africa and it sounds like Jamie is on foot with elephants we are right in the middle of a massive plain and we actually came looking for hyenas but instead we found some elephants. We did see one hyena and I will take you to the den and it's going to be quite a shock for a lot of people because the dens here are very very different. Now look at that beautiful big herd of ellies heading across the open grasslands. Okay Dave I'm going to do the, the jump. So I'm not in your way. So I've just got to, to scuttle across my um, my 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 turret. There we go. Okay, scuttling across. There we go. And see that navy herd of ellies now. How many do you reckon? I'll oh, probably about 25 to 30 elephants. Beautiful. I was hoping one of the little hyena cubs would pop his head up while we were sitting here looking at the elephants, but no such luck. So this big open area that the Ellies are walking through now, and uh, it's it's quite a large one between the River Road and the Escarpment Road. And uh, this is a, a big swamp, mostly, during the, the wet season. And it's not so bad at the moment, but, uh, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let me get an air scratch while wandering. And there we go. And then oh, some topi in the distance as well. Far, far in the distance. And there's the ball. Illinois is wondering what makes elephants uh, more curious than other animals. Uh, you probably find it's got a lot to do if you if you look at the most curious animals. They've got more complex family structures, so hyenas, elephants, um, and also just because they're so big, there's very little that can can threaten them. Uh, that can also help with their sorry curiosity, probably with their curiosity. But isn't this absolutely ex exquisite? Okay, I'm just going to jump down into my turret quickly and uh, reverse back to show you guys something. Now, as I was saying, this is a big swampy area, and uh, but I've got a nickname for it already. I'm just trying to remember how to say the, co the, the, the correct name. Let me just go. Bye, Ellie's. Oh, We've got to be careful. There are lots of big holes around here. We don't, oh, you see that there, Dave? Can you get yeah. that little hole there? Now... That little hole right next to us there, that little tiny bit of shade, is actually a hyena hidey hole where they can sleep away from the sun. So this is the North Clan territory. And uh, the North Clan is the biggest clan close to, to camp. And there are around 90 known individuals in the clan. Now, when we've seen hyena dens in the Sabi Sands, you know, those big prominent termite mounds, um, very easy to spot from a distance quite often. But if you have a look here, to the right of us, this is 
what a hyena den looks like in the Mara. Okay, I just need to come out of my tone. Sorry for making wobbles, Dave. Okay, so there we go. Let me just find a spot. There we go. So this is what a hyena den looks like here. Oh, I... So, Ricky, I think it was hyenas. I, I had a bit of a break up there. But do they give birth in dens or in open ground? They give birth in dens under the ground. So, what they'll have a pregnancy den normally uh, where they'll give birth away from the main part of the clan. This is not. This is a nursery, nursery den. So, there are a lot of hyenas. So, once the hyenas get to a certain age, this is where they'll bring them. So, there we go. You can see there's a buffalo skull. Um, that's been there. there. We did see one little one pop his head up when we first arrived, but they're, they're being a bit shy. And there we go, I just wanted to check the... There we go, the Old Punyata Plain, or the Old Punyata Swamp is the area we're in. And um, I, as I said, I've got, a, I've got a nickname for it. I quite like it. Well, you, you like it, Dave. So I'm going to get Dave. So you can see basically this whole area from the edge of the escarpment right down. If we keep going all the way down to the Mara River, and there, there are elephant friends in the, in the distance again, um, I've nicknamed the Clan Lands. Because literally, with with any animal that makes a slight noise of distress, there's the 10 or 15 heads that just pop out of the grass anywhere around you. I mean, there's 90 odd hyenas in this clan. It is absolutely massive. And I can't wait for the, the, the of our other vehicles to arrive with our nocturnal setup. Because this particular clan, when the wildebeest aren't here, hunt hippo and buffalo. So imagine that incredible, like 30 hyenas running around chasing a hippo in a big open plain. It is going to be some spectacular viewing. And I think we're going to start seeing uh, a lot of behavior that we've never seen before. And the other very, very interesting thing about this this whole hyena behavior here is that the hyenas here are all smaller than the ones in the Sabi Sands. So apparently the further south you go, the bigger the hyenas get. Now I'm not 100% sure why yet. Uh, I'm trying to find out. But it could be just due to the fact that the clan sizes here are so big that uh, they don't need to get that size because when there's 90 of you in a mob, there's pretty much nothing that's going to stop you. And uh, another bit of, oh, look, 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 petrol patch the sticular. There's a new bird for a bunch of people. Come on, pop your head up now, petrol patch the sticular. It's, what is this sticular? I can't really see it now. Look like one. Psst, psst. Oh, there, there's no, there, that's not a cesticula. That's oh, You see on that open bit of ground there, Dave? Uh, yeah. What have we got there? Oh, it's a little seed eater. Oh, it looks... Oh, come on, turn, your, turn yourself. Look at, it looks like a little zebra finch. Um, let me just double check on that for everyone. But there's another a new bird for everyone. And pop, maybe even a new bird for me. I think I'm pretty sure what it is. Well, it'll be a new bird for my trip to the Mara. It is an African quail finch. Sorry, I meant quail finch, not zebra finch. An African quail finch. That looks to be the female there. And uh, isn't that exciting? Now, we're going to keep moving. The hyenas are not here. They said the, uh, from chatting to the researchers, the den sites tend to only really get active after dark. And all these little bushes around here are probably where the hyenas are sleeping because there is no cover around the den. So we're going to keep moving. I think we might have a couple of surprises still in store for you from Kenya. But while we do that, James has got something you're definitely never going to see in Kenya. And if you do, it's very lost.